Little Wild Things is an urban farm located uh, right here in the heart of Washington, D.C. I'm Mary Ackley and I'm the founder of Little Wild Things City Farm. My initial idea was not to actually start my own farm. I wanted to learn. I, I, I recognized that I didn't have very much farming experience or actually any farming experience. So I wanted to learn from another farmer. And one of the farms that inspired me in um, my reading and learning about farming was Polyface Farm in Swope, Virginia. They were one of the leaders in like commercially successful sustainable farming, which really interested me. The fact that you could earn a living, a good living, and make a profit farming as well, but still do it in a way that's sustainable. I initially had the idea to farm in front yards and backyards, which is something that I had read other urban farmers uh, were doing, but it was mostly in the context of suburban neighborhoods where there are larger yards. I couldn't find anything, so I was just li literally was on a run one day and I just got the idea that there, there was land at institutions, so schools and churches might have larger plots of land in a big city like Washington, D.C. So I, I ran past the monastery that's kind of just in my neighborhood and on my usual running route and noticed they had a large front yard. And that's when I just um, decided to ask, <laughs> decided to email them. They actually said no to the front yard, but they, they said, well, we do have this plot of land in the backyard, an old garden that you might be able to take a look at. Lo and behold, you know, I walked back there and we walked down the hill behind the monastery and we came to a beautiful, beautiful um, old garden that was about an eighth of an acre. Um, and I knew that I could probably do something there. We also have an indoor location down the street at our neighborhood pub called The Pub and the People. On the lower level of the pub is where we grow um, our microgreens and shoots under lights and everything is grown in soil. We started off growing um, salad greens and uh, kale, rainbow carrots, patty pan squash. Um, those were kind of the core things, uh, rainbow chard. Um, and quick greens, which at the time were, um, you know, baby greens, but also things like sunflower shoots and pea shoots, and that's kind of what led me also into the microgreens. I read about microgreens and how, um, you know, chefs are using them in restaurants, they're highly nutritious, and they're relatively easy to grow, and again, they have short days to maturity, which is really important for us. We sell to about 50 restaurants here in Washington, D.C. Uh, we also sell to caterers, hotels, um, and other types of institutions like the Smithsonian Museums. So we have a, actually a wide variety of customers, which is great. We also sell to some online grocery delivery services and local grocery stores. Our first client was really instrumental in getting us started. It was a fellow woman-owned business called Chaya Tacos, and you know, they they were really important in our story because they believed in us when we were very small and they worked with us even as we were experiencing, you know, all the, just the growth, uh, the growing pains of any small business, you know, in terms of increasing our production capacity and all of those things. And Chaya was uh, much smaller at the time, although they already were, they were successful from the get-go, but they started at farmer's markets. And then um, they were just really successful, so they now have a store um, in Georgetown and um, they're still one of our biggest and best clients and supporters. So it was women supporting other women and believing in our ideas that uh, really gave us the confidence to grow. Once I got a little bit of traction, one of the key decisions I made was to um, really focus on crops with short days to maturity that grew, microgreens grow in eight to 20 days. And the reason for that was because I didn't have a lot of farming experience. So when I started initially growing crops that took longer to grow, I realized that when I encountered um, you know, challenges, I wouldn't get another chance to grow those crops until the next season, which is a long time when you're trying to learn and, and grow a business. So with microgreens, I was able to learn every eight to 10 days and perfect the methods much faster. So I just knew that the shorter the, the days to maturity of the crop, the more chance I would get to learn. And that has proven to be like a very strategic business decision for us because now in just a, a matter of 
two to three years, we are, you know, we have a high level of expertise in about 30 different varieties of crops that we grow, and we know everything about those crops. Originally, I modeled my farm um, on some other urban farms that I read about and also was were kind of listening to. There's, there's a movement of young farmers right now uh, getting back into sustainable market gardening, so sort of smaller scale market gardening. But when I say smaller scale, I don't necessarily mean small in profits or revenues. I was really interested in this idea of um, farming at a human scale in a sustainable way, but also in a way that would be viable from a business perspective and allow me to have the um, type of lifestyle that I wanted to have and to use all of my creative talents. Farming is like a perfect combination of um, a physical challenge, a creative challenge, and an intellectual challenge uh, for me. So I like all of those things, so I get frustrated when I'm sitting in an office and I'm just, I guess you would say, exercising some of my capabilities or muscles. Literally every day, like different things come up and different things happen. As you're, as you're growing any business, like any small business owner would probably say the same thing. So it's no different, but we do have to deal with the unpredictability of the natural environment, which is a challenge for farmers in general, and it's no different for us. The future of Little Wild Things is really exciting. We're planning a move to a larger facility in the next couple of months, and uh, we hope to be able to serve even more customers in not only Washington, D.C., but the greater you know, D.C. area. Yeah, it's really exciting, not just for Little Wild Things, but for farming and young people who want to get into farming in general. I think it's an exciting time.